I'm um, thinking we'll just start with hidden. Bleeder blade. Let's do bleed. I like bleed. Okay, shield bash and unload are both pretty good. Nothing else that I'm really thrilled about. Summer execution can be fine eventually, but it doesn't help much in the early game. First blood sort of helps in the early game. One mana deal 14 is not that bad. So, I mean, I could take a uh, something extra to use with like the uh, the summary. Otherwise, probably a bleed it out. Bleed it out's pretty good. Let's just go bleed it out. Almost never a bad choice when you're on the bleed build. Okay, what are we looking at here? Thief's Code, always good. Sidestep, always good. Whoops. Uh, quickness and Scheme are both kind of interesting. Hmm. Nothing that's truly phenomenal here, though. A lot of stuff that would just be, like, okay, right? Like, all of this would be okay. Even this. Best thing is probably just the Thief's Code. So... there. Going like this is nice for the mass upgrades. And then we hit the elite. Since the floor rewards are kind of mediocre, it makes me want to go to the blood library, but that does come at the cost of the shrine. Which means this would be the path. If we think we can wait this long to purge. I don't think it should be that bad with just one void. No cursed item or anything, so no chance to pick up a second one here. This seems fine, though. I think I can handle this. Lot of value in this path here. Lots and lots of value. So let's make our changes here real quick. Put in the shield bash, unload, uh, first blood, bleed it out can wait until it's been upgraded, which will happen pretty quickly at the rate that the uh, upgrades will be rolling in here momentarily. Okay. Alright, so currently that's four bleed. We'll just go ahead and make him vulnerable here. Now they're both within range of a kill from draw blood. We did not draw one. Funny, but does not ultimately matter. And then literally anything does it at this point. There we go. Alright, so the first upgrade... Uh, the things we want to upgrade in general are the Lick the Knives, the Bleed It Out, and that's kind of it actually for the moment. And the cards we're picking up... None of these are, like, particularly good upgrades, right? None of these candidates. So I think we'll just go ahead and start with the Bleed It Out.
Maybe we'll get something good to upgrade in here. Uh, ooh, okay. Two very strong defensive options. Sidestep and Tower Shield. I'm thinking I want Tower Shield right now. Sidestep becomes better, uh... Well, hmm, I don't know, because, like, we're getting another sidestep, and time, in terms of timeliness, the the tower shield is better immediately. But since we are getting all these upgrades, right, the chance to have two upgraded sidesteps in the deck is pretty appealing. Probably put a blackstone in one of them. Even though in the short term, I think that this will be a lot less good. We should be okay in the short term, right? Like... These two cards can help pull a lot of the weight. We even have Vulnerable for Lucky to line things up. I guess I will take the sidestep. And then, do I upgrade it before Lick the Knives? Combo is not particularly important right now. Not any more so than usual. And we're not getting the Slick Strike. I, I am going to still do one Lick the Knife first. Yeah, we'll do it this way. Let's make sure we put the Bleed It Out and the Sidestep in. Just do like that. And now, such a nice combo, immediately setting up the clot for the lick here. Um, I think we'll take it off of you. And then we can make you vulnerable. Nice and easy, as per usual, bleed versus these guys. Okay, the maneuver is probably worth playing as well, but uh, I guess I'll do the sidestep now. And then this upgrade will be on the other lick. Uh, this yellow stone... I have no idea what we're gonna do with this yellow stone. I should probably save it for in case we get something at the Blood Library. I don't know what we would get at the Blood, li the blood Library, but we can get something there that we might want a Yellowstone. And I will go ahead and toss in the Evade here. See what we can do with this. Okay, immediately drawing the Void, not really what I was hoping for. I will go ahead and for the Throat in though, that seems decent. Very slight misordering. Okay, the unload is still pretty good. I think we're just d gonna do this for the vulnerable. 30 damage is hard to say no to. I'll get rid of the bad lick the knife, and I guess the four of the throat, honestly. And we'll weaken him, extend the Vuln by a little bit as well. 14 next turn, we're getting 4 from here, we would need 10 more. Yeah, it all just kind of depends on if we draw sidestep or not, whether or not this will be convenient. Nope. No sidestep. He is taking an awful lot of bleed damage, though. I'm not going to bother without the combo. Yeah, all that Vuln that we stacked up on him, though, made a huge difference for us there. Finally, we can get combo. Took way too long. So I think we just want to do like this. Twelve. Yeah, I'll hold. Taking this one real slow. Okay, we 
got the unload back. That's nice. Dump that. And I think we should probably just be going for damage mostly at this point. This is only six bleed, but that could matter. Gotta deal nine this turn. That's actually not particularly easy, but we can do it with this hand. Okay. I will go ahead and upgrade the other lick. Having two of those is nice. Time to fight our first elite. Hmm. Could be a good carrying case build that we've got going on here. Card spikes, probably not. We have one maneuver, and there's like. Yeah, there's a thief's code, I guess. So that would be like one bleed per turn. It's pretty underwhelming. Gilded sheath. Doesn't really help that much. Yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking it's just a carrying case. Hoping for more from this, but it's not that bad. I'm a little bit scared about how much damage this guy is going to deal to me, though. Either way, I don't think I have any changes that make sense here, so... Dang. No combo. If I had to lick the knife, this would be such a good turn. We'd apply all the weak and vuln. As is, I guess we'll just hold the shield bash. So I'll do like this. At least get some bleed on him. Okay, uh... Maneuver into sidestep, huh? That's pretty good. That is pretty good. I think I should maybe just take the 5 here. We're always doing this. So yeah, it's taking the 8, but... That might just be the right choice. So I can keep holding the shield bash. Kinda think it is. This is just applying bleed, so that's not that good. Yeah, I'll take 8 here. The uh, bleed it out is very close to killing him now. There it is. So close. Just not quite there, but that's fine. We got enough block anyway. Okay, very glad I took uh, 8 on that previous turn. Finally gonna... Well, not quite yet. We got one more regular fight, and then we'll finally get to the Blood Library, and hopefully that'll be a nice boost in power. We could use it. We're gonna get a green stone, or we have a green stone, rather, for the Thief's Code that we're getting from this fight. So that's handy. The red stone in it, not doing us many favors right now. Dang it. We keep drawing the void in the opening hand, let alone just getting it before the unload. But I guess it's not the worst thing in the world in this fight. That being said, this hand is terrible, so we're gonna play it. <laughs> and there's no real reason to play this right now since we have a carrying case, so I won't bother. Okay, at least we got our combo gain early this time. On the turn where he's doing a big attack. Probably should put the bleed on him here. Okay, for the throat's gonna be pretty good. I don't mind taking two here, it's not that bad. Yeah, so I think we're actually just gonna go all in here. Yeah, that's gotta be the right play. The health we're losing doesn't even matter, of course, if we uh, spend it at the Blood Library, so... Health potion, that's good. Alright, show us some good stuff, please. Hmm, well... We got some good things. Got massive overlapping buttons. Defensive attack is really good. Uh, 
Grape Shot, I think, is probably not worth the pickup. It's good for a couple more fights at least. It's going to fall off for sure, but we might take it just to try and get relics. So I think we can just start by grabbing the defensive attack and probably also the blender. The once more with is like, it's always interesting, you know, and there's some really good stuff to put it on. Putting it on defensive attack is incredible. And also potentially putting it on bleed it out is like a really horrible janky uh, in cold blood. <laughs> but we don't have in cold blood, right? So could well be worth it regardless. Uh, I don't think we're ever going to be doing all that much with Arcane Overload. If we had, like, a whole bunch of juggles and reloads and stuff lined up, then, like, maybe, you know? Because we have we have two sidesteps and we have one maneuver. So, like, that could have been a thing, but... Hey! Divine Shield coming in with the two-month resubscription. It says, good afternoon, just saw that you were online. Well, hey, man, thank you for tuning in, and thank you so much for your continued support. Very much appreciate it. Uh, by the way, I want to say, uh, I, s <laughs> I, s I saw that comment you left a couple days ago on that one YouTube video I had. And I checked out, I, I went and clicked on your channel, and I saw that it's just completely full of tractor videos. And I just want to say, that, that is so awesome, dude. I love it. Tractors are one of those things where it's like, I have, I have never ridden a tractor. I have never owned a tractor, I've never even sat in a tractor, but uh, they're just so cool. <laughs> That's like, like when you're like a little boy, you know, and you're like interested in that kind of stuff. I, I didn't even care about like monster trucks or like construction vehicles or anything, but like tractors are just awesome inherently. <laughs> Old school mold board plowing. How about that? That's cool, man. I always kind of have to, like, I, I know it's not true, but, like, my default assumption is always kind of that, you know, like, the people who are into these kind of games and stuff like I am are just going to be into, like, your typical geeky interests like me. It's always neat to, to see, like, all the other stuff, you know? Cousin's Farm in Minnesota. I don't think I've ever visited Minnesota. I've been to a lot of the states, but not Minnesota. I wouldn't mind going sometime, though. <laughs> yeah, man. For sure, it's cool. You got, like, way more subs than I do as well. You got, like, 3,000 or something, if I remember. I think I'm gonna take, uh... I think I am gonna take the Grape Shot. So we get that... Get that nice relic. And now it's just a... Th decision to make if I want to grab these guys, mostly just for the relic. I don't know, like, like we're never going to use this and we might use this. Because we also have another lick the knife, you know, so like maybe I upgrade this as well and we have pretty reliable combo gain. 70 to to $100 a month in ad revenue for your for tractor videos. That's not bad. That's not bad at all, dude. Yeah, you need like uh, a thousand subs, I think, to monetize. Which is kind of surprising. You don't need nearly that much stuff on Twitch, but it's obviously harder to get live viewers versus concurrent views. 2,000 even. How about that? I, I, I don't know, man. We're not even picking up that many other, like, rares or uncommons here. Like, right, Deep Cuts is, is not very good. This card is almost always a trap. So how much value are we really getting out of the Blood Receipt? That would be minus 14. I don't think it's worth it, man. Even though we have a carrying case that lets us play a little more safe. I'm not going to. Okay, what's in this chest now that we've had our little... Oh, hey! <laughs> I was just uh, complaining about how I wasn't able to grab this earlier since I had to take the the sidestep instead. Get the best of both worlds. That is pretty good, and as for the upgrade, we suddenly have a lot of good candidates. Defensive attack is great. Thief's code is, I guess, not necessary because we have the greenstone and no other real 
Upgrade candidates. Blender's probably not worth it. We don't really need to reuse this. One should be enough. Tower shield is good. I think we'll just go ahead and start with the defensive attack. This is such a ridiculous upgrade. Getting plus five block and plus five delay block is truly nuts. Okay, yeah, you know, let's take out the first blood. You don't really want this to just be applying six bleed, and we're already at the point where that's happening more often than not. So defensive attack can go in. Uh, shield bash has been really good. I'm sort of interested in keeping maneuver, so I guess one more evade for the tower shield. And I think we'll drop a four the throat for the blender. And then draw blood with our good old thief's code here. So this will help out making the void a little bit light, light, a little bit less likely to show up in our opening hand. Uh, I guess I should put the stupid grape shot in for now. Like I said, it's at least going to be decent for a couple more fights. And we can also put a yellow stone somewhere now that we've seen the blood library and the chest. I don't mind putting it in a sidestep. I do want to upgrade this other sidestep too, so. I could put it in the one that I already have. Otherwise, on the maneuver, I guess. Or even the shield bash, I could see that. I don't know, this is actually a tough call. Maybe I even put it on the defensive attack. 14 block. That's kind of good. You know what, actually I've never done that before, but I think I want to do that. We're gonna put it on the defensive attack. See where this takes us. How was your Thanksgiving, Divine Shield? I had a pretty good time. Got to go see my uh, mom's new puppies that she got while I was visiting. She's two little Yorkie puppies. They're crazy. They absolutely loved my dog, though they wouldn't leave him alone. He'd had enough of it after like half a day. <laughs> he was trying to like hide up on the couch because they were too small to get up there. Very cute. And of course, ate lots of pie. Always a must. We got our combo gain. Do I want to immediately spend it on a for the throat? Maybe. Okay, let's see. Still want to do this to get the rebound spread. Yeah, and we can get back our, our combo if we hold this via carrying case. That's such a big defensive attack. Honestly, let's just, just finish you off. That's too clean to say no to, because now we can put the combo bleed on you. We've already got most of the block handled. Yeah, this looks uh, looks good. My entrance said it was good. Visited my parents. Ten miles away, that's nothing, yeah. Daughter was home from college. That's good, man. It's always nice to get to visit the family, right? Um... I mean, Blender's kind of not very relevant at this point, to be honest. So let's just get rid of that. And then Grape Shot actually matches up pretty favorably versus these health numbers, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, okay, an Exploding Bottle as well. Our first two potions have been very, very good ones. Exploding Bottle and Health Potion. Quite happy to have those in the inventory. So let's put the Exploding Bottle here as our panic button for now. Uh, and the second sidestep is going to be great. Our defenses are on lock. Not only do we have this good defensive relic, not only do we have this good defensive relic, we've also got just, like, amazing block cards. And they're only going to keep getting better. And boosted draw consistency with Thief's Code. Just tons of awesome stuff here. In fact, now that we have the Thief's Code, I have half a mind to say, like, what if we don't even go up to the shrine, you know? And we do this instead. Get a quickness... That's a big maybe. We'll have to consider that a little bit more as we uh, reach that crossroads. Yeah, Slick Strike's a good one. No doubt about it. Often my mastery take when I'm on Blade. 
This is the good old slick strike. This time we went with the bleed it out though, which is very hard to say no to for the bleed build. Just so convenient, so efficient. Okay. <laughs> the optimal play here is to maneuver and not draw the void. A, a still very good but slightly less optimal play is to block with sidestep. If I play this and draw the void, I'm going to look so dumb. But if anything else happens, it's better. Okay, so we're going to give it a try. Thank the Lord. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, this is really annoying here. I'm going to have to just purge a draw blood for no reason because the bubble. So it's a little bit of a waste there, but it's going to be well worth it, I think, when we apply a bunch of vulnerable... Deal 30 damage there. Could probably dump a draw blood to be honest, and then also hit him with the big for the throat. Yeah, I would have looked like an idiot if I drew the void there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and this defensive attack, man. 14 block, that's so good. It's not quite enough, but the sidestep gets us the rest of the way. We do want more combo. We want like all of this stuff, but we can't afford it all. I guess I'll pitch the shield bash. And... Okay. How do we want to do this? Start with this. Gain the combo. Purge the rebounded copy. Purge that. Smack him. Purge, smack. There we go. Found the line. And now we have our opportunity to get the second upgraded sidestep. Uh, the only real competition right now is the tower shield. Grape Shot's probably going to leave the deck after this uh, boss fight, right? We don't have blind spot on because we're trying out this new one original sin uh, I-50 setup. And the Grape Shot, if we're lucky, would be a big help with the pigs, but... Also, of course, all the damage could just get absorbed by Bertha, so... I don't know. Gonna have to think about that a little bit more. For the time being, though, we are pretty energy-hungry, so I think I will go ahead and upgrade the other sidestep. Suddenly, we just have all these very expensive and very powerful cards. Yeah, I think that's it for now. We're gonna continue to wait on this blue stone. I'm sure we'll find something better for it. It's not like it's urgently needed currently with the Thief's Code carrying most of the weight. A blade belt. That could be okay. Splattered saw blade might be better. Spell shield, probably not. It is a ton of block with uh, the starting blood rush spell. Five turn cooldown. That's kind of ridiculous, but we don't need block really. Like I said, our defenses should be on lock. So the splattered saw blade is very good with uh, purge effect on bleed it out. It's really good with blender and it's fine with anything that generates shivs. Whereas the blade belt is actually a little bit harder than usual, I would say to use. Like this isn't an attack. Um, this isn't an attack, right? We just have expensive stuff in general. We've cut down to just three draw bloods. I'm thinking it's just going to be the saw blade. None of these were super amazing though, so mildly annoyed. Make sure I put everything in. Okay. Saw blade me. And we drew the void turn one. Oh well, at least we drew uh, a lick the knife, so that's nice. Might as well hold the maneuver. I maybe should have weakened him there, too. Yeah, the change to make the, instead of silhouettes in front of the elite, just show the actual relics, it makes sense to me, because people like me who recognized relics by their silhouette anyway could theoretically make decisions ahead of time, and I didn't do that often, but I did do it sometimes. And it's it's not really necessary to like hide that information away, especially because anyone could, in theory, just back out and then look in the compendium and look through the relics and match them up and you know that's just like very tedious and unnecessary step to jump through but it would technically be optimal gameplay i'm in favor of changing things like that so that optimal gameplay is more fun so i, I think it's a good change 
Okay, so he's not cleansing debuffs yet. I think this is the turn where we're going to blood rush him. I also think we're going to do both for the throat and unload. So we want a big old sidestep. Hmm. I guess I'll purge the draw blood. And then we'll see what maneuver has in store for us. Blender. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, the uh, the clicking to upgrade thing, I think mostly has to do with the controller support stuff. Because most controllers, it's like you have the trigger as like the only analog input. I mean, besides the stick, of course, but that doesn't make any sense. It's like you could like hold down the trigger to upgrade or something. I don't know. It, it seems like it would be weirder to like hold down a button on a controller to get the upgrade. Uh, we'll use the blender here instead of the for the throat just to get it out of the deck. Don't really want it anymore after this. And we are already past the void, so I might as well hold the unload. Uh, now the controller support is out, anything you can share that's next up for the game? Well, there's a few challenge coins, although I think he mentioned those in the patch notes, uh, that, if I recall, were simple enough that they should just be super duper quick to put whatever finishing touches on, and those, those I assume will be out next patch. Uh, not confirming that, not confirming that, you know, just probably I would expect that. And then the next thing would probably be the additional encounters. Those have been in the works for a while. There's been a lot of uh, stuff put together for them. We got artwork already, all kinds of stuff. Uh-oh, we've got a bot. Let's give this guy a ban. Where is the... I don't even remember how to do this, man. I don't even remember how to do this. Yeah, no, it is going to be cool. It's going to be really cool. There's the ban button. Holy cow. I haven't had a bot in forever. I totally forgot about that. Okay, uh, back to the actual game. Sidestep is most of our block, but just barely not all of it. Don't want to take chip against this guy because his ability gives him extra frenzy, and that's really bad. I guess we'll just play like two of these. The tower shield is absolutely not necessary right now. So we'll just go evade, then sidestep, and we'll try to hold on to this, I guess, to re-up the Vuln. It's about to fall off. So we'll, we'll take the extra damage here while we can. I guess we'll pitch the Grape Shot. I'm not thrilled about losing the Grape Shot. I should also probably just play the Bleed It Out, if we're being honest. Yeah, we'll do it like this. This seems good. Yeah, there's there's plenty more stuff planned, of course. Even including the, uh, the possibility of additional characters. Which I say possibility, it's almost guaranteed. Just, you know, that's going to take a while, of course. Relatively speaking. We drew back to the grape shot. That's fun. All right. So the benefit of going up besides getting to purge a, vo a void, even if I don't really care that much about it, is mostly just the card pack, right? And if we go down, instead we get a quickness and a slick strike. Slick strike is yet another defensive card, although it's also decent offense, of course. Quickness is mostly what I'd be excited about letting me spend more combo. I'd probably put back the, uh, the For the Throat that I took out at that point. I do feel like we could use something a bit more dramatic, though, to alter the deck, so I think I should go for the card pack. I'd also like to find a good place for this blue stone. 
And I don't think I'm gonna bother with Scheme currently. Yeah, this is the cautious one. Uh, you get it for taking three Blood Library cards. And if you take all five, then you get the Reckless Blood Pact. Which is regular block instead of delay block. But uh, I didn't want to do that. I, in fact, I have not gotten the Reckless one in a hot minute. It's been quite a while. Most of the time, I don't think it's really worth it these days. If you're playing on I-50, that is to say, at the very least. Because all it takes is one turn where you have exceptionally bad RNG and you'll die. You know. And I like to play for consistency. Um, I think we're just starting with a grape shot here. It's not even all that great. You know, actually, we're, we're gonna do this. We're gonna go... Put Volm on you. And then Grape Shot. Okay, that was a pretty bad result. That wasn't great, not gonna lie. <laughs> we'll hold the Lick the Knife here. Yeah, if we could have killed the Cinder Hound instead, I would have been pretty happy. Killing the Pup is not great. Okay, but at least we got another Pup instead of another Cinder Hound. So now it'll just be Lick. Get our block, and then do a big old blender. What a card blender is, man. What a card. This will at least get us full progress. The pup is already dead, of course. The howl mongrel is gonna die as well. And that means we just play this for block. And that's it. Don't have anything that the pup will eat, sadly, so he's going to be getting on out of here. Later. Okay, what do we got here? This is an interesting pack. Uh, One-hit wonder is not bad. It's good to have immediate damage, right? Um, Bloody hell is interesting. I don't think this is necessarily a Salt in the Wound deck. It could be. This would make me wish that I had that uh, Blade Belt that I passed on. Oh wait, no, actually we have, the sp we, we have the Saw Blade, right? So that actually makes Salt in the Wound quite a bit better. One Hit Wonder is a bit less necessary because we have the Defensive Attack, which is pretty good upfront damage. And with the high cost of stuff in general, it's going to be hard to put too much into this. These guys, I don't think, are going to get used almost at all. We have okay weak application from our spell already, but paying one to apply weak two doesn't really seem like what we want, and I don't think we can spare an upgrade for this thing anytime soon. So we'll just roll the uncommon in that case. Slice and twain. Yeah, not what I wanted. Not what I wanted. But that was far from a total loss. There's a couple decent things we got out of that. So the unload is probably not really worth it anymore at this stage, because we're about to get rid of our void. So we'll replace that with salt. And then, uh... The bloody hell. Thinking about the bloody hell, that would probably replace grape shot if we were to make that change. But I don't know. Maybe I'll just keep the Grape Shot in still. Like I said, it, it could be pretty good against the pigs if we have good luck. We should be strong against them in general, though, right? Like, lots of expensive cards. Carrying case. I'm gonna try not putting it in for now. Go ahead and get rid of the Void. And the Thousand Cuts is, in most cases, actually, I think, going to be better. Because it's not that often that we want to commit, like, three or more energy to this. And if you're playing, t if you're paying two or less for it, then it's mostly just a worse Thousand Cuts. So, we'll give this a try. 
Okay, early bleed it out is always good. And yeah, we can hold the salt, right? Like, that's pretty nice. It's a really weird hand here. I think I'm just gonna play the maneuver. Ooh, okay, yeah, that's that's really good, actually. That is very good. Now we can salt him. I'm thinking we should probably cash in the spell now. I missed two damage for not having done that prior to playing the draw blood. <laughs> Look at that, though. That is a lot of bleed. <laughs> nice, dude, nice. So far, so good. I think I will leave the Grape Shot in. And that means that the only change would be if I w did want to put in the Thousand Cuts, and I don't think I do. I don't think I do. I think we're just going to leave this as is. If we want Assault, we'll just have to try and do that on a turn when the Piggies are dead. Should I just Grape Shot immediately on turn one here? Honestly, it doesn't seem that bad. I'm gonna do it. Okay. Softened them both up pretty good. It's actually pretty nice that it didn't outright kill either of them. Because I can take their fuses down a bit more before I kill them. The Thieves Code has been such a, uh, an MVP right now for our deck, man. What an incredible card. Okay. So the five is what we want to watch. We can easily take that guy out with a defensive attack when the time comes. So for the moment, I think the play is to do this for our block, do this for the combo. And then at this point, we can just do draw blood. I actually want to hit him with a draw blood here so that if we draw... Oh no, there are no draw bloods left. We already got past all of them. Yeah. So in that case... We're going to need to actually... Hmm. That's, that's, that's actually quite awkward. We do need to actually have real immediate damage to kill him. And there's none of that left in the deck. Huh. In that case, let's go... This is so weird. I don't even want to hit her because... Yeah, damage is getting wasted no matter what here. Huh. How about that? In that case, we'll hit you. And then bleed you. I don't know if that was optimal or not. I can just let him explode as well. It seems a little bit silly though. Should probably kill him. Right? I mean, 14, 17. Yeah, no, I really should just kill him, shouldn't I? Right? Because we're this is so weird. This is so weird. If I let this guy die, and I purge the bleeded out so that these two are both bleeding, this is 8, and this is 14, and this is going to be 5 plus 12, right? Which is full block. I guess that works. What's up, Hurry? Yeah, we, were, uh, we got pretty busy there for a bit, but... Things are going pretty well this run so far. We've got some interesting stuff. We went to a blood library, got uh, 
some classically good cards so far. Double upgraded sidestep is very cool. The Thieves Code has been great. I think it's looking pretty nice. Yeah, okay, we're gonna we're gonna hit Bertha in that case, which means for you to die first, I guess we'll blend her, right? No, because that'll use oh jeez. I didn't think about that either. How am I gonna get the salt live? I can't get the salt live, can I? And then get my combo back. It's not possible. So we'll hold the salt, I suppose, in the carrying case. So in that case, we will start with Blender. Purge, hit, play, purge. Yeah. And now we'll just draw the lick the knife and... Yeah, Blood Library is always fun. Get rid of that exhaustion. Okay. Gotta get back around to our combo, man. It's a must. I'll do this for delay block. Oh, whoops, I was meant to purge this evade. Got a little bit distracted there. Either way, we're well on the path to victory here. So I'm not too worried. Okay, there's the combo gain. Let's just take you out this way, huh? Got our combo here. We'll put this on you, as well as this. Take another three. Uh, this is the Splattered Saw Blade, hurry. All of your bleed applying cards apply one more bleed. It's okay, It's we have the salt in the wound to try and take advantage of it. Although it hasn't been going great. The timing of this card is always a little bit awkward when you don't get your combo gain early. But in theory, it's an enormous amount of bleed, right? Right, like, see, he's at 84 right now. We have three com- or, excuse me, he's at 56, and we have three combo. Now he's at 84. That's pretty good. But things really do need to line up. You need to be able to apply that initial bleed without spending combo, and then you need to have it at the right time, which the carrying case does kind of help with. Uh, booster pack with a rare seems pretty good. I really would like to change out quite a few of these cards still. Maybe find some better combo gain. I'll take it. Uh, not worth spending most of our money here on this promise of exercise. <laughs> I don't think I've ever read that name before. That's funny. Yeah, I don't think that's worth it. Okay, what are we looking at here? Oh, agility, huh? That's a good one. Resurgence, also extremely good. Another bleeded out. Sure wouldn't mind upgrading that from the shy. This is a really good pack. All around great cards. Uh, hamstring is probably the least interesting. So, yeah, we don't really want to spend our combo on that. Let's go ahead and roll this. Back up. Eh. If we had more draw and discard, maybe. But these four cards, really good. I mean, this one not without an upgrade, of course, but that's fine. And what are we looking at here? Gusher. Natural 20 is a maybe. Concentrate's a maybe. Mm. These two are probably worth considering. There's a lot of stuff that's, like, decent here. Okay. And, of course, our Soul Collector. Can't forget the Soul Collector, so... That means that if we want to get the Elite, we're skipping this, and we're also skipping the Splatter. Coming like that. Uh, we have some money. We could go for a Disheveled Salesman and potentially get actual value out of it. Almost makes me want to go down for the treasure as well. Yeah, this is definitely a pathable Disheveled Hurry. Right? Like, that's that's already good, going like this. Uh, we're, we are going to a Shrine, so I could even... Uh, pick up an item here, and I don't feel too bad about it, right? Between uh, Thief's Code, this blue stone that we can socket, and potentially...
potentially even the grape shot if I want to leave it in to help with that or put it back in or something. Uh, we would probably not go up. These aren't like amazing pickups anyway. They're just okay, right? So we would do like this. That means we're not getting the quickness in the upgrade there. Hmm. I don't know. That that seems pretty good. I'm a little concerned about our deck's ability to properly scale up. Like, it might... At the pace we're going right now, I think it would take us quite a while to kill the Void Touched. But... There's definitely possibilities with all the relics we can potentially grab here, right? We've got this, 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 this. That's a lot of good stuff. Okay. Let's go ahead and deck at it then. Uh, the Resurgence is going to be super sick just for purge combo mostly, I think. Because, uh, like, in terms of expel cards, we have, like, Blender. And we actually kind of want Blender to be expelling and not coming back later. Nothing else that really makes any sense here, right? Like, I don't care about imprint, I really don't care about building steam, I don't care about backup. So, playing it for its actual effect is pretty meh. Uh, I'm actually not even sure if I cut an evade for a From Shadow. I probably do. Hey, and hurry! Also, with the two month sub streak, thank you. Always appreciate the support from you guys. It means a lot. Y'all <laughs> y'all would get to see your uh the the new sub badges you have except that you guys all have the founder badge, so <laughs> So we don't get to see the new ones. They're the different colored void stones is what they are. Like I think you guys can see it on uh if I type. Yeah, you can see red for 2 months. Okay, um, yeah, so without an upgrade, we're not going to put this in. I do want some number of draw bloods. You know, actually, I think I am going to cut for the throat. And I might put in the bloody hell. I'm thinking I'm going to put in bloody hell. <sighs> Grape shot is definitely still a bit of a meme. I should probably remove it at this stage. This red stone has, like, nowhere to go. We have, like, no actual reliable attack damage. So I guess it just won't go anywhere for the time being. And we can just put one on a... Uh, actually, we might get both of those black stones. Double black stone sidestep sounds kind of crazy. And we could even buy a stone here, of course, so... Mm, but black stone agility is also really good, right? You upgrade this sucker... Okay, yeah. I, I will go ahead and put a blue stone on one of the side steps. And do nothing with the red stone. Okay. This is gonna be the plan. Uh, Alright, so we don't really want to use our carrying case versus these guys, of course. Uh, we, have, we also have to think about how we want to put the energy into bloody hell before we just start purging everything. If we want to have energy left over for next turn. Um, I think I probably am just going to do two. Because now we'll have full energy. And he's got enough bleed to trigger all of my relevant clots. So that seems adequate. Uh, okay, I mean, Resurgent Splendor, that's not bad. Let's toss the tower shield. And we'll go... I guess we'll do this as well. Why not? And then we can play that. This is so awkward. I don't have enough uh, stuff to actually spend my energy on. Everything wants me to be, like, purging it. <laughs> what a problem to have. What a problem to have. Unless I really want this second thief's code. You know, I didn't actually think about that. I could use Resurgence to get extra Thieves Codes. That's not bad. Obviously right now it's better to gain combo, I think. But extra Thieves Codes, pretty good. 
I mean, I don't know, man. Is it actually better? I don't necessarily want these guys to die. And like I said, I don't have anything to spend my energy on. So, you know what? I changed my mind. <laughs> We're gonna resurgence for an extra thief's code. There. That is the play. And then we'll just do this anyway. But, I, yeah, I really don't want these guys to die before the taxidermist, so I'll have to line up the damage here. There's the defensive attack. I was going to say, this will be the thing that probably makes it easy. Uh, don't need the shield bash. We have Vuln from the spell. Only one of them's attacking. How much are we at right now? That's not quite enough. Uh, so, let's salt one of you guys, right? No, we can just salt you. We can just salt you. It doesn't matter. How much bleed you actually have, because you're going to die to this. And then we can you Okay, yeah, we always start with this. And then if we were to take off 8, would he still die? What does that come out to? 31 minus 8 uh, times 1.5 is still enough, yeah. So we can take that. And there we go. Nice and easy fight. Now, part of the reason, now that we're in Act 2, I guess I can say this, part of the, a big part of the reason... <laughs> that we changed our I-50 to have uh, one original sin and we took off blind spot is so that we can know before we're fighting the goats. So that would potentially be here, 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 or here. Four opportunities, and then we can use a potion. It's pretty unlikely with just four fights that we find them, but if we do, I think we'll be glad that we have this new setup. Okay, Dawn Raid, huh? I don't know about that. That doesn't actually seem that great. It's like we could be, we we could like put the redstone in this, but it's so expensive. We already have a lot of expensive stuff. I think I'd rather just take a sanguine shell, and honestly, just replace the tower shield with it straight up. We have not needed this at all because we have a lot of smaller sources of block that come together. You know, the sidesteps, the maneuvers, delay block from the defensive attack and the relics and stuff. So, I think this is probably the way to go. Sorry, Don Raid. We're just not doing enough physical damage. As for the upgrade at this point, the Bloody Hell upgrade is okay. Upgrading the Sanguine itself is actually pretty nice. We might need to rely on deep cuts, honestly. I'm wondering if Deep Cuts isn't just going to be better than Salt in the Wound the way things are currently going. Because the Salt upgrade reduces the clot. I don't know, I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm a little worried about our ability to scale up properly. I always rag on this card, but I think we might actually need it. And if we need it, then we have to upgrade it, of course. How many more upgrades are coming? One, two, three... Is there anything we really want to upgrade here? I mean, the natural 20 is a pretty good upgrade. So it would be one upgrade on the deep cuts. Probably one upgrade on the... Uh, uh, what the... The sanguine shell. Yeah, okay, you know what? I'm, I'm going to go ahead and commit to it. I think we do need this upgrade, the way things are going. And we're just going to go ahead and swap it out with the salt. Sorry, salt. You're a really cool card, but uh, I just, I don't know if it's quite enough for us. Okay, Pyromites, we should be pretty okay against these guys. We purge quite a bit naturally. Go ahead and cut the Tower Shield for the Sanguine Shell. And leave it at that. This is an interesting hand. It did not get any better. Well, there's nothing else to do, so might as well beat you up a little bit. OK, 
Okay, so there's our combo gain. Uh, we got 14 blocking. Okay, so we don't really need the maneuver in this case. Do I want to from shadow at all? Not really. Honestly, I don't. <laughs> so let's just rebound here. And then we'll defensive attack. We'll make him vulnerable first, this seems wise. Get the extra damage there. Then we can just play this, get another Thief's Code in play, I guess, why not? Keep the burning in check at least a little bit. Bit low on energy now. Okay, but we're doing fine in terms of defense anyway. We don't need the bloody hell here. Yeah, actually, whether or not we need the bloody hell at all is a little questionable at this point. Uh, I guess we don't really need the shield bash. So we'll throw that down. We're always purging this. The only relevant rebound here is the stupid draw blood. Yeah, that's the only relevant rebound. So, sure, I guess. Yeah, the deep cuts is just not happening right now. Get the blender. I think I'm gonna full purge here just to reduce burning. Even though we have our carrying case. Five's no big deal. We are pathing through a shrine. Although we did want to use it to purge, taking that Raven's Gift potentially. Uh, hell, we might even drain the Raven's Gift uh, to get more souls. It's a definite possibility. Alright, let's finish you off. There we go. I don't think we're going to bother with the Apprentice Blade. It's a maybe. We might work that in. Uh, here it's probably just Sanguine Shell though, right? The agility is not really worth it anymore now that we're not doing Salt in the Wound. Yeah, definitely Sanguine Shell. Gonna get a lot of value out of that, I think. Okay. It's been a while since we've had a good disheveled Salesman. We'll see if this can be one. The Gauze is interesting. The Gauze is interesting. Jumper cables are really good, actually, I think. Serpent Skull is going to be pretty good against the Void, I think, which, you know, we, we are saying that that's a concern. And the Exploding Pomegranate is not bad at all, either. Right? Like, maybe I just pick up both of these. I don't quite have enough to buy, say, like, these two or anything. Hmm. Do I have enough for these two? Uh, no, I'm just barely shy. I'm like a hundred shy of buying both of these. Well... Hmm... I don't think the gauze is worth it if we're not on... Salt. And even then, it's like a little bit questionable, right? Like, I don't care that much about the licks. And what else do I have that even clots? Nothing? Nothing. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're just going to take the cheapo ones. Okay. I mean, these are pretty good. Note that the saw blade only works on uh, bleed applying cards, so it doesn't benefit something like the pomegranate. Yeah, that, that was okay. That was an okay salesman. Meanwhile, here, the combo platter is alright. You know, because we're... We're usually playing Blender the first time we draw it, and we... Oh, wait a minute, actually. We don't have any other combo spenders at this point, do we? Hmm. Hmm. Stone Sling's still okay, though, right? With, with black stones that we're about to be getting. The Barbed Wand is not particularly useful. Yeah, these elite relics have not been great, man. They really have not been. Yeah, I don't think there's anything to change up here. We're just going to roll in. Hmm. 
I guess we'll take the stone sling. Okay, well, opening with the blender is pretty nice. With combo to spend on it. Get blended. And we'll just hold on to the defensive attack. That was a really strong opener we had. Fight should be pretty easy. Dang, we drew both Banes? Those are the only two Banes, right? What the hell? <laughs> really? Whatever, at least she's still weak on this turn. So, that's good, I guess, right? Uh, it's a bit awkward here, but if we just do this, we have eight, purge that, play that, and probably shouldn't need this next turn, so I'm just going to purge it just to draw, draw more cards. She's already very close to dead, though. Still vulnerable. Um, okay, I guess we'll ditch the lick. It shouldn't really matter at this stage. I mean, like, see, this is the thing. It's two mana for 25 bleed. That's a good rate, but, like, it's not all that astonishing. Especially when you compare it to how much quickly, how much more quickly you would usually be killing something if this was like an in cold blood, you know? But. Oh well. I'm not gonna complain too much. Just, just the, the right amount of complaining only. Alright, we've had no issues with elites so far, though. Even though the relics have been mediocre, the fights have been easy, if nothing else. So... You know, we're really light on potions, too. We can do this. That's at least nice. Yeah, I mean, it's like bleed as a mechanic in and of itself uh, scales naturally, you know, but... Uh... That's not enough, unless you have, like, a ton of bleed appliers. Uh, how does what work with Goat Spawn's Divine Shield? I'm not entirely sure what you're referring to. <sighs> the, the freaking crystal, like, hand me down. Let's count the heavy cards in the deck. One. Two. <laughs> and this one expels. <laughs> oh... Yeah, this is this is Garbo. Oh, uh, yeah, this doesn't actually change our path at all going up. It's just I hadn't highlighted it for some reason. So it doesn't make them any more likely to show up, thank the Lord. Uh, yeah, we're just going to take some souls here, right? Bump us all the way up to 40. Get a few more before we actually get to the soul collector. Seems good, right? Yeah, it does. Drain it. Uh, oh, we don't have any money. <laughs> we just spent all our money at the Disheveled Salesman. We can't even buy these potions. I sure do wish I could get my hands on the straw potion, though. Why can't you give me a discount, man? Just this once. I'll, I'll pay the rest back with interest, alright? You can have all of my money before I go into the vault. Promise. It's the season of giving, right? She's not having it, man. Okay, yeah, no changes to make here, right? I don't, I'm thinking about putting one for the throat back in, now that we have the pomegranate. I think we could probably cut one draw blood for another for the throat again. I should probably do that. I'm going to do that. Okay, malformed, huh? Well, we have no combo gain for the blender. So I guess we'll be holding the blender. So much damage on turn one, man. It's really quite rude. Honestly, I don't think I'm going to bother holding the blender. I think I need to go for defenses here. So you know what we're going to do is we're going to do... <sighs> I want more energy, though. Oh, 
Maybe I just play the freaking blender, you know? Maybe that's what I do. We do like this. And we're gonna do this. I think this is actually a go for the exalted warrior first kind of situation for once. Whereas I usually advocate go after the Flesh Beast and try to synchronize his death with the Rod and Gut Fiend suicide on turn three. But, you know, with the, the bleed, it's a little less easy. You, your, your control over how the damage is being split up is a bit less fine. Okay, uh, looks like we're going to be all right in terms of blocking, though. So that's pretty cool. Ooh, I want to rebound anything. I guess. I guess I want to rebound. You know, if you're just going to let me. So now we've got a bunch of delay block. We're probably just going to hold this. Right? Or should we purge it and try to for-the-throat him next turn? We don't have any bleed triggers or anything. Right? I got a blender we could get back. Yeah, our damage is actually kind of dried up here. Very little damage to be found here. That is an issue. Maybe we hold both. It's actually kind of looking like it's going to be what we do. We might as well rebound off you, because you're just going to die for your suicide attack. So, yeah, you know, we'll do it like this. That is what we're going to do. We can pitch one of the dust, or the days that he gives us. Luckily, we did not draw the stupid void as well. So now... This is barely not enough. The deep cuts in tandem with it would be enough, of course. Ugh. Yeah, okay. So we'll, we'll just purge the resurgence then. And then, yeah, Deep Cuts is going to kill you, which means that we'll go ahead and defensive attack you. And we'll probably be fine. Oh, wait, yeah, well, no, of course we're fine. That's already enough. Of course we're fine. The, uh, the Serpent Skull sends the bleed over. I completely forgot about it, man. Sure, I'm glad I bought it, though. Okay. Um, I'm actually thinking about upgrading this for the throat now. It's a better upgrade than the blender. Probably a better upgrade than the bloody hell. The From Shadow rebounds have not been mattering that much, so... I could theoretically place salt in addition to all this stuff, right? Or instead of the for the throat, actually. Maybe that's what we do. Maybe we, instead of putting the for the throat back, we just do salt. Okay, yeah, you know what? F I I'm gonna I'm gonna force it, dude. We're gonna make it happen. We are going to make salt in the wound happen, all right? I promise it's good, okay? I promise. Okay, last fight with the Void in the deck, and we are looking at a Rage Artifact, which is not that useful. The Torch, which is like, okay. What? what I don't sound convincing. What are you talking about, Robin? <laughs> uh, Divine Shield, Redstone, and Salt doesn't really help because uh, Salt gives us shivs, not Hidden Blades, and Rage does not affect shivs because they don't deal damage. They only apply Bleed. Rage is just not very useful for us in general, is the sad state of affairs, because these are only cards that actually benefit off of it, you know? So, <laughs> yeah, like, Rage, Rage, just, we don't want it, man. Just crummy elite artifacts throughout the whole run, but the cards have been making up for it. This is the best uh, elite artifact we got, easily. I mean, this one's been okay, right? Like, it's, it's not bad. It fits the play style that this deck has going on. Um, okay. Yeah, so I think we're I think we're good to go here. Let's just roll. 
Take the torch. Yeah, like we have torch and stone sling, like. Anyway. We can immediately go for resurgence stuff. That's fun, I guess. And I think I'm gonna actually get the maneuver as the card I keep. This guy could be a bit of an issue. Damage spikes up pretty hard. Alright, uh, getting Volum down. There's lots of good stuff going on with this hand. Let's get rid of that. Let's actually get rid of both of the draw bloods. And we're gonna go maneuver. Ooh, sidestep. That is very good. That's actually incredible. Because now we can do that. Do that. We need five for the salt, which is just one use of bloody hell. Of course, we can't actually do that, so we'll, we'll spend two on it. That's fine. And then we salt him. That's a lot of bleed. That's not bad. Triggers his ability, but since bleed happens after he attacks, the damage does not actually increase. And on this turn, he pummels us, which means his ability didn't matter. Expertly dodged. <laughs> Okay, uh, defensive attack is all the block we need. Yeah, what is going on? I've noticed that when we're hovering over the cards, they're like freaking out a little bit. Anyway, um, all our block is accounted for, so I guess we'll pitch the evade. Um, yeah, I think we're just gonna like deep cut him, huh? Yeah, the certain enemies, like uh, Bertha that we fought earlier in this guy, it's like you're just gonna trigger their abilities. You kind of have to accept that, you know? Waiting a couple of turns before you trigger the abilities is sometimes right, but you have to commit eventually, you know? And then it's gonna happen every turn afterwards, so... Just time it well and you're fine. We're gonna save the Sanguine Shell here to handle next turn. Hey, what's up, Zekris? Last time I fought the Beast of Malice, I had the Relic that triggers bleed before the enemy turn. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, one of those situations where the Relic kind of bites you in the ass a little bit. Not many situations like that in this game, but that is one of them. Uh, okay, so we just have two bleed triggers here, so we just use them. Goodbye. Okay. Go here, purge the void. We've purged singular voids twice now throughout this run. And we got a whopping 44 souls. We're absolutely loaded. Time to see what we can turn this into. Show me some good stuff. Okay, Book of Arcane Secrets. I'm immediately on board. We have a lot of expensive cards. Extra energy is... I mean, also, not only is it the extra energy, of course, the extra max energy quite matters quite a bit as well because we have a lot of stuff that wants us to purge. Right? Or like, these guys gain us energy, you know, uh, we want to purge this, we want to purge this. Uh, we've had some situations where it was like awkward, so this is really good. <laughs> Can you sell me the relic that gives me an in cold blood? Yeah, I wish, man. I, I would snatch that up if such a thing existed, but uh, instead I'll just happily take this book. Uh, blood blade, blood bait is kind of garbage. We have no slow. Uh, Regal Monocle, also kind of garbage because enemies are always going to be suffering from debuffs because they'll be bleeding. So uh, that's it for the guaranteed stuff. The Void Stone he's offering is blue, uh, which isn't really all that useful. So I think that just means we're taking another random rare. We got the Spice. Huh. I mean, that's... that's really good. That's gonna... we're gonna need to rejigger our deck quite a bit with that in mind now. Uh, I think we'll take the common here as we close on out. I'm gonna focus. It's pretty meaningless. Also, uh, I literally only just realized this, dude. He has, like, relics on the thing here, right? One of them is the square peg. There's a round hole next to it. <laughs> I did not notice that until just now. That's funny. <laughs> The other ones are like, what, the In Emergency Break Glass, the Pre-Fight Meal, and the Butcher's Blade. Okay, um... So we have Spice now. 
that means that we don't want lick the knives. Not really. It's not worth it. We don't have enough stuff that's going to be like spend combo and then regain it in the middle of the turn. So those are just not good anymore, which means that we kind of have two free deck slots all of a sudden. So that's cool, I guess, right? Uh, and yes, that's right. We have a black stone as well. Thank you for not letting me forget that divine shield because I almost did. So uh, probably just goes in the sidestep, right? Maybe. I mean, Blackstone Deep Cuts is, like, kind of a thing. I'm a little bit less interested in a Blackstone Sidestep now that we have, uh... Uh, the words are gonna come to me. The, the Arcane Secrets, yes. <laughs> now that we have this as extra energy, I'm a bit less interested in this as a source of extra energy. We could still use more, but, you know, Blackstone Deep Cuts is really expensive, but it does scale you a lot. You know? Because I've done Blackstone Deep Cuts before, and it's usually a little underwhelming, honestly, as this card usually is. We took this kind of more out of necessity than anything. Nevertheless, I feel like it continues to be a bit of a necessity, so... Specifically just for Void and maybe some of the Vault Guardians, right? I think it's going on the Deep Cuts. So that'll be that. And there is another Blackstone coming up. If we get there, it'll go on a sidestep. Uh, but for now, we have to put two more cards in the deck, right? So we can put in more spenders. We've got Blender as a spender. Bars. Um, and that's literally it, right? So we can put two for the throats in? I guess. We're going to cycle them pretty often. Also, at this point, Resurgence is literally just an extra Thief's Code. So, <laughs> that's kind of interesting, I guess. It's still good as an extra Thief's Code. I thought this was going to be way more useful as a purge for combo, but it turned out that, nah, things just didn't come together for that. Oh, but you know what? Yeah, now that we're doing uh, the double for the throat and stuff, do I need... Uh, bloody hell anymore. Can I cut something... Could, could I put something in instead of bloody hell? Like phantom walk. Redstone, phantom walk, if we upgrade it. I mean, even if we don't upgrade it, it still triggers once. No, oh, that seems kind of good. We are a little bit lacking in terms of immediate damage. Seems a lot less useful now to have the bloody hell. Right? Because what are the remaining cards? Natural 20 and unrelenting. I do kind of want a natural 20, but I think I would just straight up cut shield bash at that point, right? Or an evade, actually, is probably better. Yeah, you know what? Okay, we're gonna we're gonna do this. Redstone Phantom Walk. It's not the GOAT boys, there's only one more chance for him. See what we can do. so nice to just have the three vulnerable immediately ready. This guy's taunting us, but we have the Helm of Focus, so we don't care. I still think we're probably just going to go for him. So... Yeah, let's just... We'll, we'll do this for the vulnerable. The weekend might be relevant next turn. It depends. And... We want to hold this. I, he's probably got enough bleed already. Do we really need to hold the other four of the throat? I don't think so. There's a blender coming up. Yeah, this looks good. Okay, um... This isn't quite all of the defense we need. There's nothing that I care about rebounding. Yeah, we're just gonna maneuver, okay. So, get rid of that. It'll be... Not Blender first, actually, because we might draw our salt. So let's maneuver. No, I didn't get it. Okay, that's fine. Then we can blender. Can defensive attack you. I guess, yeah, we want to purge this. You die exactly, you're dead, and then we can go deep cuts on you, and you'll have one health left. 
But these two add up to 100, so... Oh, and he won't because of the, the Serpent Skull. That's right. That's right. Strength Potion. That is not a good one. <laughs> it's not a good one. Okay, uh, this is our last guaranteed upgrade, so we need to think carefully about where we put it. Um, could put it on a random for the throat. Could put it on the phantom walk. Yeah, there's no like real standouts here, honestly. The best thing would probably just be natural 20, just to make sure that I can keep vulnerable up versus the void for as long as possible. I think that's going to be it, honestly. Right? But, I mean, does that even matter, you know? Because if I don't have Vulnerable stacked up from something else, four turns of Vulnerable versus the Void is still only one actual turn of Vulnerable. So that means that unless I had specifically got him with, uh... Uh, Shield Bash or my spell... I don't know, it's, it probably still matters more than any of the other stuff, right? Like, Phantom Walk is honestly more for discarding garbage cards than it is actually for, uh dealing damage so I'll, I'll do the natural 20 we'll do nat 20 and then yeah we'll cut an evade last chance for it to be the goats it is not the goats cool we're f reasonably good against dragon mother I think Yeah, we can just roll in. Alright. Thief's Code Blender to get rid of it. Oh, whoops, I forgot to do this on her. Oh, well. It's fine. We'll do it this turn. Don't need you. Yeah, we'll just go ahead and slap that down. Uh, we want this for block. Don't need the natural 20 against her, I don't think. Not really. Especially because we still have the shield bash in the deck. So we'll just get rid of that one. And I think we'll just salt her. Yeah, in fact, this is just so much freaking bleed. The sanguine shell is just dang near gonna kill her. In fact, it's not dang near going to kill her, it is going to kill her. Exactly. Nice. Now we get an energy potion. That's a pretty good one. That is a pretty good one. Okay. So before we enter the boss gauntlet here, doing this and then the Vault Guardians and the Void itself, I gotta go take a real quick bathroom break, so I'll be right back.
All right, we're back. Hurry asks, what's happening in this picture? Can't make it out. I don't have a clue, dude. <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember where I found this image or how I found it. I've had it saved on my computer for quite a while. Uh, to me, it's always looked like some sort of cryptid, you know, like some sort of like otter man or something <laughs> in the water there. Uh, but I like it. I like the aesthetic of it. I think it looks nice. You know, it's uh, it's mysterious. Anyway. <laughs> If anyone could ever, like, track that thing down, track down that exact image, I've tried reverse image search and stuff, can't find it, uh, then, you know, <laughs> if the mystery can be solved, that would be pretty cool. But it's also kind of cool that we don't know what it is. Anyway, uh, let's take on the birth pit. You gotta be a little careful with, like, the salt and stuff here, but, uh, using things like Blender and then Deep Cuts... Um, and purge and bleed it out. I think we'll be able to get there just fine without uh, buffing up the attack too much. Fortunately, we did open with deep cuts, which is not really what I wanted. So I could hold this, and I kind of am tempted to play the defensive attack now. It doesn't really seem that bad, does it? Yeah, let's... Let's just defensive attack immediately. Yeah, the, the truth is probably going to be that it's like from some student film or something, you know? But I believe... <laughs> okay, um... So this is actually a fight where I might just resurgence for a blender, you know? Like, that is a possibility here. Or we're just going to deep cuts a bunch, right? So, and bleed triggers and stuff. Yeah, you know what? I probably don't need to resurgence for blender. So in that case, uh, I think we're just going to purge you. Do a little bit of this. Get that going. We need, like, more bleed to get started before we start going in with the deep cuts. Okay, well, that's some more. I don't mind buffing her up just once here. And the torch went off there and killed the other pinky, so... it's pretty good, I guess. Um, plenty of defense coming up, so no sanguine shell there. I say plenty of defense. It's literally only two cards, but they're good block cards, dang it. Also, when birth pit attacks, we'll be able to just weaken... Okay, um, yeah, so we said we didn't really want to go too crazy with the salt, but I don't know, this actually seems like an okay time to go crazy with the salt. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of bleed, like an actual ton of bleed. I think we are going to go crazy with the salt. Okay, there's the blender. Um, I mean, that's just better than four of the throw, right? And we can only spend combo on one of them. So... We're gonna go... Blender. And then we got one, two, three, four, five, six... Okay, right. So we'll just purge that. Salt. Stack it up. And then... Next turn, we just play Bleed It Out and win. This guy's gonna transfer Bleed over to somebody. And went on to you. Oh yeah, you're just dead, in fact, actually. <laughs> nice! Got 35 out of 36 health. Um, we can get the most useless modern art ever. <laughs> this is such a pointless thing for us to have. Uh, 25 max probably doesn't matter. Two upgrade points. Uh, maybe is good? I, I don't really know. I don't know what we do with upgrade points. We put one on Phantom Walk and maybe one on For the Throat. I guess. I don't know. Obviously we buy this because there's nothing else to do. Yeah, I mean, it, it probably makes the most sense to just take upgrade points, right? Or should we take the buffer? Honestly, I mean, these upgrades are so irrelevant. They just don't do anything. 
I'm gonna take the the HP. Release the souls. Yeah, there's no way we're getting this other Blackstone, is there? Okay. Fair enough. What blessings do we want? The first card play triggers an additional time, so that is our uh, Thief's Code. We'll have three of those total by the time we get to our Resurgence. That seems pretty good. 20% damage. Uh, probably not important, given the way Bleed scales. By the time we've killed the other dudes, the 20% will probably not matter. This is also probably not all that important if we, especially if we take this. Although we don't necessarily want to fight her because all the anti-debuff stuff she does, that could be a bit of an issue. This is completely useless, and we play a lot of block cards. Uh, so I guess we will take the blessing from the spiders and probably the obsidian golem. You know, even though we don't need this effect in order to handle the garbage cards, it'll still be giving us free energy and extra cycling. You know. Never gonna say no to that. So we'll fight these two, and I actually don't know who we're gonna fight after that. Probably Death Knight? Probably. Don't have a particularly good matchup against him, though. For Spiders, we got the Exploding Bottle, of course, and we'll put this as a panic button. Actually, it probably makes more sense for this to be the panic button. Uh, Spell-wise, we do have uh, Bacon Bomb, too, so we'll put that in there, just in case. And let's give it a go. Versus the Void, uh, we're probably just going to do Energy Potion Brew, Crippling Potion Belt, I guess. Seems like what's going to happen. Okay, uh, I think this is just going to be a big Phantom Walk turn, huh? Yeah, I guess so. So here we want to ditch... Yeah, just one of those still. Uh, okay. Just enough. <laughs> the bacon bomb made the difference. Good stuff. Okay, go ahead and put our spell back. Next is the golem. Uh, so we're trying to save one energy potion for the void. I think that we're fine to take this guy without a brood potion. The, obviously the health potion doesn't make any sense to brew. The strength potion basically doesn't exist because it's so irrelevant. Um, and we wanted to save, yeah, so it's... We're brewing an energy potion versus either Obsidian Golem or the Death Knight, and I think I'd rather have it versus Death Knight. That seems like a worse matchup. So we might as well <laughs> brew the Rage. I guess it's... It just does not matter. It just doesn't. Total whiff of a potion. But it's fine. It's fine. We can do this. Which is cool. This is not going to be good anytime soon. We'll just cycle back around to it, I think. Uh, I do want to put a stop to your nonsense at least a little bit here, so... We will go ahead and weaken you and get a nice start on our bleed going. Hex could be a bit of a problem, depending on the RNG of what we draw. Okay. This is f fine. Yeah, this is fine. We don't need the Phantom Walk. We don't need this Draw Blood. The Blender isn't that good. We'll just go from Shadow. And rebound the Salt? Yeah, because we, we, we can brew up the health potion, actually, if we need to as well, right? Or, or belt it versus uh, Death Knight, so... Let's just go for the damage here. This is actually, like, a lot of damage. And we're not even taking all that much for it. Look at that. Okay. 
So we're just like two bleed triggers away at this point. We don't even need the deep cuts. This is why I always crap on deep cuts, man. It's like... <laughs> It's never as good as you think it's going to be. It just isn't. Um, okay, we don't really need the Vulm. Let's see. So let's purge that, play that. Play this. Play this. Take another three. And I think should seal it out. Because we've got a lot of things that just instantly kill him or give us all the block easily. We just need to draw any one of those things. <laughs> deep cuts. <laughs> Come on, deep cuts. You gotta do better than that, man. You gotta do better than that. Let's just see how much extra bleed we can get. It's a little bit of overkill. This is why I was saying also that the 20% uh, damage on the void is probably not super relevant because that's just how bleed scaling works out, right? Usually when you kill, you end up overkilling by a pretty significant amount. Okay, death knight time. Let's... Let's actually do it this way. All right, I'm gonna make the same request of chat that I always do. Please, for the love of God, because I know I'm gonna forget, yell at me before the fight ends if I haven't used the health potion in the belt yet, okay? <laughs> I'm trusting you guys. Just go ahead and type out the message and, and cut it so that it's on your clipboard and, and just spam it out when the time comes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, we can almost just salt him, man, immediately. <laughs> we just need any extra bleed gain, but we didn't have any. Unfortunate. Um, I think we're gonna... What are we gonna do? I, I want to hold the salt, I really do. I think it's actually kind of important to jumpstart the bleed here. But I do need to care about defense, but not that much. You know, I do have a little cushion, a little margin for error. So I'm going to hold both of these. See what this does for me. Okay, um, don't need to draw blood. Let's go with maneuver first. Then defense. Yeah, this is so, so many banes, man. So many banes. Okay. We'll go ahead and salt him. I think at this stage we might as well just do this as well. Do I even just want a blender on top of it all? Kind of. I definitely want to do this, though, with as many uh, Banes that are in the deck now, actually, so. And then we'll just take this on the chin. Yeah, okay. Okay. Because we're still healing to full if we crack the potion. Okay, and there's plenty of block. We can even just purge the Sanguine Shell, actually, so. You know, let's, like, ditch that. And, I don't know that. Okay. Yeah, let's go for Phantom Walk. That's decent damage, I guess. And then we'll Blender. Okay. So he's like halfway dead. He's well enough set up for deep cuts at this point. There it is. Um, yeah, we just want to kill him now, so... I could rebound the deep cuts. I, 
guess that's the play, right? Because this is 48. Yeah, okay, I, th I think that's the play. This is kind of dumb, but I think this is the play. Oh, wait, I played the wrong one there. I'm stupid. Ignore me. It's fine. He's going to die anyway. All right, okay, there we go. That, thank you. Thank you, Divine Shield. The health potion. The health potion. There's the health potion. There's the kill. We're good. <laughs> okay, okay, we did it. 61 HP. We didn't even get our purple stone. What a ripoff, man. Absolutely ripped off. Okay, um... No changes to make specifically for Void. We got everything we need, I think, right? I mean, like, I could... Swap a maneuver for a tower shield, maybe, or something? I guess I'll do that. I mean, the draw bloods are pretty crap, but, like... They theoretically can help us get off the ground on an early turn when we need to get more bleed going. I probably should have bleed it out as another bleed trigger, though, instead of one of them. I think that's it. Last thing is, like, in theory, I could put backup in there. I can discard the stuff on Phantom Walk, I guess, and... I wouldn't mind a bit of overcharge. We actually have literally no overcharge whatsoever, which is kind of crazy. I can't remember the last time that happened. That's why I wanted the jumper cables. No, okay. I think I am going to do it, actually. I think I am going to do it. it. It's an expel card. It thins the deck a bit more so that we can cycle faster, you know? Okay, let's go. Energy. We're gonna have lots of it going around. Okay, resurgence immediately. That's pretty good. Um, nothing here that we care about rebounding. Again, though, we the salt is just not. I guess we can at least see if sidestep gets us uh, something that will make the salt active. It did not. We'll just set up our buffs here and. Uh, kind of it. That's kind of just it. If we had the gauze, then we could be salting immediately, but we don't, so we can't. Don't really want to phantom walk that much. We'll see how much garbage we get. I'm expecting at least three or four garbage cards. Maybe more. I hope not, but maybe. Okay. So here's the blender. That's really good to see. Uh, we... Wait, what? Really? <laughs> really? I can't get enough block here? I mean, I'm not going to play the tower shield at this stage, so... Let's go nat 20, then sidestep. Then... It's, just, it's so awkward. It's so awkward. We're going to keep holding the salt, then. There's nothing else to it, right? We keep holding the salt. We go blender. We go... I think we want to target you... I think that's going to be the play here. And then we purge this and we have massive excesses of energy. Okay, but we might actually be able to uh, kill Void Touched on the right. I mean, he'd still give us garbage, but we might be able to bleed him to death. And then he'll transfer the bleed, of course. Um, okay. I guess we'll for, for now we'll get rid of the backup. And shield bash. We'll just go defensive. Maneuver. Dist that. Okay, we got a bit more energy out of that. Um, okay, assault first. And then deep cuts is going to get you there, and the massive excesses of bleed that we get here do actually matter. Uh, we're not, this isn't a massive excess necessarily. Uh, Zeke was saying targeting the left ones, the bleed transfers over. And the thing is that like the, where the bleed goes is random. 
and if it goes on the void, then it doesn't matter, right? And even if I had enough to kill him, since it's only transferring 50%, or kill her, rather, uh, it wouldn't be enough to actually kill him. So, in this case, I don't think it actually ends up making a difference. Uh, but yeah, it is, it is definitely worth thinking about the fact that enemies act from left to right. Sometimes it's very relevant. Okay, um... Is it worth using Bleed It Out to kill you here? I actually think the answer is yes. And we have the backup Phantom Walk combo. We got it. We actually got it. Okay, I don't think we need the defensive attack in that case. Um, I guess we don't need the natural 20 either? Kind of don't need the fourth. Uh, hmm. Yeah, okay, let's, let's pitch that. Let's go Bleed It Out to kill you. Which gets 72 bleed on you, so that's decent. Then we'll just play the backup. And just start pitching some of them. And we'll play one of them to close it out. So we'll go ahead and use this now. No, we'll we use the potion now, right? No, 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 no. Spell first. Spell, then potion later. We'll get our overcharge. And one more. Okay. Pretty good starting amount of bleed here for us to start building off of. Uh, I guess we don't need the From Shadow? Wow, okay, this uh, is not a great hand. Not a great hand. Like, I could use this just to deal 90 damage. It's not particularly impressive. I think we can do better. I'll let it cycle back. And I think we're gonna crack the potion now on this turn. Okay, yeah, this is, this is a good looking turn we've got going on here now. I want, like, all of this stuff. I guess the maneuver's the least relevant. Crack the potion. And we'll start with... Salt. Then this. Get those down. Do that. Deep, deep cuts. And you're out of here. Alright, GG. The deep cuts came through in the end. It might be significantly worse than other bleed win conditions, but it's good enough, you know? You can't always have the best cards. Sometimes you have to make do with the rare cards that are almost strictly worse than other rare cards. But we did it. GG. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Haggard. All right. Yeah, how about that, huh? Pretty... No, nothing about this deck was, like, super strong, you know? We made a lot of use of the carrying case, and the Splattered Sawblade was good. It wasn't, like, amazing, but it was good. The uh, Serpent's Skull did a lot of work towards the end, which happens when the enemy health balloons. Uh, and the Spice was fun. Spice is always good. It just let us make room for a lot of other stuff in the deck. Good run! Anyway, I uh, need...